God is doing a very special thing in your life. I need to say that to you. And eyes have not seen it. So if you keep trying to see it with your natural eyes, you're going to miss it. But you have to hear it and receive it. It is a faith thing. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. And a lot of us will say, God, when am I going to see it? And God says, when are you going to hear me? Faith comes by hearing. But how can they hear the Antoine? According to Romans 10, they can't hear without a preacher. And how can he preach except he be sent to them who are listening? Everybody, did y'all get that? That's how he preaches faith to those who will listen, those who have an ear to hear what the Spirit says. And I'm challenging you tonight to, to, to pull on my spirit tonight, to pull on what God has for you tonight, to pull on what you need to hear tonight that you may live thereby and be a blessing to the kingdom of God. I believe there's so much more for us. And these are, these are the worst times, but I found out in the worst times in the world is when God does his best work. I did a sermon on teaching on God moves at night. When it's so dark you can't see is when you begin to understand that God is still working. You do know that's the way the Bible opens up. Verse number two, and the, and the earth was out form of void. And darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God hovered over the darkness. And God said, what happens is when things get dark, crazy, and out of place, God reminds us that he's had his hand over your life the whole time. And those who have an ear, just wait on God to say so. I hope y'all are here tonight because the Spirit of God has been hovering over your life, keeping you for such a time is this, that you would walk in a building and hear a preacher say what thus said the Lord. And your life be changed forever. Truthfully, I know it. One word from God will change your life forever. But if that one word is ever spoken twice, it will move throughout your generation. The blessings of God were meant for not just one, but for generations. When he called Abraham and he said, Abraham, Abraham. It was a sign of covenant. So any time tonight, if you hear something that, that's confirmed that you heard God say or you've heard God speak to in your life, it's confirmed God has said it twice. And it will move not just for you, but through your generation. But you've got to begin to speak on it. You've got to begin to believe in it. You've got to begin to call on it like God is talking to you. You're not coming just to get a Bible lesson. You're coming to get a word from God that confirms that God is doing something for you, in you, and ready for you to do something. Anybody ready to do something for the kingdom? Now, I want you to know God got to fix a whole lot of us so we can do it. Amen. There's a lot of things in my life still got to be fixed. And I think I'm all right because I know what it used to be. You know, and I know what I got other folks and friends that still do. But there's still more for me. As long as you're in this life, there's always more. Until you get to the place where the Apostle Paul says, when he says it's time to be over, he says, I fought the good fight, I've kept the faith, and I finished my course. When will you know when it's over? Or do you know when it's over? What does your expected end look like? What does God have that when you serve this time on earth, God says, you through doing what I wanted you to do? What does your life look like? Where are you? Where are you living? What you living with? Who you living with? What you, where you're working if you're working? What kind of ministry are you in? What kind of ministry you done started? What kind of, are you in here with me? At the end of your journey, are you at an expected place where God expected you to be? Or where you, are you where you want to be? I made up in my mind, and I had to reconcile this. I want to be what God expects me to be. Because where I want to be may not be God's best for me. The Bible says in Jeremiah 29, I want y'all to put it up, verse number 11, that the Lord God says this. The Lord God says this. Listen to what he says. This is God speaking. I know the thoughts and plans that, for I know the thoughts that I think toward you. Wait now, what did he say? I'm thinking them toward you. Wait, wait, wait. 
sounds like telepathy on it. That, that what I'm thinking is headed your way. You know what I found out, Lon? That I need to quit thinking about me and start thinking what God thinks about me. If God says, I know what I'm thinking toward you, which means what I'm thinking is coming your way. But what happens when my thinking puts me out of the way of what God thinks? Then I'm out of the way of what God's thinking for me. And every good thing is not a God thing. And sometimes the biggest trick of the enemy is to give you good things so you'll miss a God thing. Every good person ain't meant for each other. It takes two God people to get, oh, y'all in here with me what God has joined together. We, we expect good to be the answer. Are you in here with me? We expect it now, God. God says, I know what I'm thinking towards you. What is he thinking towards you? Listen to what he says. Who says it? Says the Lord. My thoughts for you are of peace. If you got something other than peace in your life, it ain't what God thinking about you. You didn't hear what I just said. It is not what God is thinking towards you. Now, now, how do I get what God's thinking toward me and where I am? Start thinking toward him. I'm going to say it one more time. Start thinking toward him. There's a way that seems right on the man and the end thereof is destruction. But the Bible tells us, and it's really clear, and I'm going to probably talk to you about it tonight. He says, put on the mind of Christ. Put on the mind of Christ. Why? Because in Romans we find out the Spirit knows what the mind of Christ is and will speak through you what the mind and will of God is for you. Is it important that you get baptized in the Holy Ghost? It is the utmost important. Do you have to be born, do you have to be baptized with the Holy Ghost to be saved? No. But do you have to live, if you want to live a saved life, do you need to be baptized in the Holy Spirit? Your confession and believing in the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible said, even devils believe that. But the infilling of the Holy Ghost, the Spirit of God, who knows the minds and thoughts that God is thinking toward you. Thoughts of what? So if, if God's thinking peace toward me, and I got foolishness everywhere around me, either my thinking is thinking, or I'm not where God is thinking I ought to be. I'm, I'm going to tell you again. If I got craziness all around me, and it's continuously all around me, and God is thinking peace toward me, and I got confusion all the time, then maybe I'm not thinking where God's thinking. Or I'm not in position. I'm not where he's thinking I ought to be. And every now and then, we have to evaluate ourselves. Am I where you want me to be? In my life right now, God, am I where you want me to be? And that's a thought you have to, you have to start tonight. Challenge yourself tonight, right now. I don't know about you, but I know this much. Time ain't long. Time is not long. And I don't want to be caught like the old folks said, John, don't want to be caught with my work undone. If God put me in this earth to do a certain thing, guess what when I get to judgment day, what he's going to judge me on? Not how good I've been, but how much of what he called me to do did I do? See, we think just, God, well, I've been a good person. I, I, I did this. and Remember what he said? Jesus said, in the last day, many are going to come in my name and say, I did this. In your name, I did this. In your name, I did this. In your name, he's going to say, get out of my face. I didn't know you. God created us for a specific time, a specific place, and a specific reason. God has thoughts of peace for you. Now, I have to live. That's, that's easier said than done when you, you live as long as I haven't seen what I've seen. I wish somebody had told me this when I was like 14. That God was thinking peace toward me. Then I went in, went in, I wouldn't have went into so many confused situations and hung out with so many confused folk. I wouldn't have listened to so much confused advice. 
Are you in here with me? I wouldn't have listened to a whole lot of confused preachers. If somebody told me that God's thoughts toward me were of peace. Now this word peace is shalom. Shalom means nothing missing, nothing lacking, and nothing broken. See, somehow we think that God specializes in our broke lives. He'll take them and put them back together, but he wants you to stay well. How many times you got to be broken before you say, God, I don't learn my lesson? How many more times? If you're broken, you're still in his hand, but he'll put you back together. But how many times are you going to say, Lord, I'm ready to do what you want me to do? This is my season. This, this is my time for favor and increase. But, but God, I'm in your hands, but I, I'm not going to put myself in a place to be broken because brokenness is a sign of confusion. You break anything, you got to start trying to find the pieces that go back to it. It is a sign of confusion. God says, my thought for you is peace. That's what I'm thinking. Can y'all say that tonight? God is thinking about peace toward me, that there's nothing broken in my life, there's nothing missing in my life, and there's nothing lacking in my life. That, that's what God's thinking, that there's no lack, there's no peace. I mean, that there's no lack, that there is peace, and there is, watch this, no more brokenness. Hallelujah. He took me as a broken and contrite spirit, but he don't want you to stay broken. That's why it's called being born again. But that's why it's also said that you got to renew your you can say, God, I'm in your hands. You don't fix me, but your head's still broke. Do you not know there's some folks in church God done say, and they done got filled with the Holy Ghost, but they still ain't put on the mind of God and their head's still broke? That's why one minute they praise, next minute they cussing. One minute they talking about folks, next minute they talking about they love the Lord. I'm ready to get us to the next level. Jesus said, I came that you may have life, and that life what? More abundantly. Can I tell you, if there's a knock on us as a church, and I'm not talking about this building, I'm talking about universal, is that all God's people aren't living a more abundant life. And we're really struggling to live life. A lot of us are existing. We come to church because we're existing. We ain't got nothing else fun to do. So I must be ready to go to church now. I done run out, I done played out. The games don't work no more. I'm tired of them. He said, I came that you might have what? And that life what? More abundant. How many people know Jesus didn't live a boring life? How many people know he didn't live no boring life? He went to parties, didn't he? He went to fish fries, get togethers. Uh, you in here with me? He dealt with some, you know, some uh, 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 took a plate to go, you know. Jesus didn't live no, he didn't live no boring life. Matter of fact, they said he hanging around with too many of them wrong folk. Because those who were staunch and starch and didn't know the God that they were saying they proclaimed were the ones blaming and criticizing the God they say they were serving. How can you be a Pharisee? Pharisees were this. They were the, were the, they were the, they were the churchiest of all the churches. If you, if you smile too hard, you were going to hell. They were the law personified. These were the ones that identified Jesus as a demon. How can you say you go to church and know God and when he shows up, start saying he do this so he can't be God? Baby, he had to do all that to be God for me. Because he had to come in some of those places and find me. He had to walk into some of those situations and, and some of those places and some of those heartaches and some of those mess up and some of my games and find me. Oh, God ain't never walked in some of y'all games. Oh, I'm just checking. Y'all ain't like I'm the only one. I know it's, come on, hell, player. He don't walk right into some of my games and stop. Hey, 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 hey. Hey, if you make your bed in hell, hey, hey. I'm here. He's that kind of God. He's that kind of God. That's why he can talk to us like he talks to us. Because he's that kind of God. 
That's why he says, to you, I want you to have life and have life more abundantly. He didn't come to them. He didn't even tell the Pharisees that. He told it to all those people who had, they weren't sure the Pharisees judged them all the time, decided where they were good. He even told it to a tax collector who was one of the most hated of all the people. I've come that you might have life and life more abundantly. Guess what he came for us to do tonight? Guess what he came for, for me to do? To have life? Guess what he came for you to do? When? Tonight. Because if two or three of us gather, he's in the midst. So he shows up not just to be here, but he comes to give us. And that life, oh, I wish y'all, would y'all grab that tonight? He says if two or three of you show up in my name, there I will be where? In the midst of you, tell him, say, he in, the, he in the neighborhood. I can feel him. He in the neighborhood. He talking to me. He in the neighborhood. I feel him nudging me on my shoulder. He in the neighborhood because he's talking right up my alley. He in the neighborhood because I needed to hear that. And wherever he is, is liberty. It's an opportunity for freedom. And he's here giving us and bringing us life. Now, let me help some of y'all. If you're going to live it more abundantly, that part's left up to you. As long as he's in the midst, he comes to give you a life. But what you do with it decides whether you get the more abundant. The Bible gives a, 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 a parable of Jesus giving talents. Gave one man five, one man two, one man one. He blessed everybody, didn't he? Because the, the one that didn't have, have none, he was happy when he got one. If you ain't had nothing, if somebody brought you a year's worth of a money, piece of money that was worth a year's worth of wages, wouldn't you be excited? He gave him that. Then he gave one with two. Gave him two. Wouldn't you get excited about that? Gave him one with five. Wouldn't they be excited about that? Notice he gives. Tell somebody he comes to give. Now watch that. That puts you in a living position. But when he comes back, the one that had five had made ten, made five more, and had ten, and he gave him all of that. The one that had two made two more. He gave him all that. The one that had one done led all the one I hit. He says, well, give me that back. What you do with the life God gives you is determined, will determine whether you live an abundant life or not. What are you doing with the life you got now besides complaining about it? Whining about it. Telling God like he don't already know what you're going through. Do we? Aren't you supposed to tell him about all your issues? Can I help some of y'all? He knows about all your issues. He wants you to talk about him. You know what real praise of worship is? It's talking about him. If I sit there and just keep telling God I'm sick, how many times he got to hear that? You know what God wants to hear? God, you're a healer. And you're my healer. Are oh, you in here with me? Uh, how many times I got to tell God I need money? And I said, Jehovah, you're, you're a provider. And you're my provider. How many more times I said, God, I'm so sick and tired of being confused and, and upset in my mind. Y'all say, I had that issue myself. I upset in my mind. God, don't you know I'm your servant? And he said, don't you know I'm peace? Uh, do you hear what I'm saying? I am peace that passes what you understand. Even though you feel like giving up or quitting or don't know what to think, I am peace in that situation. I said, you know what? I thought I had to ask you for that. He said, didn't you ask for me? And when you ask for me, you get all that. Did you hear what I said? We, Jay, and and I, think, I think we miss so much coming from this side of the pulpit of telling people who God is already in their life so that they can live a more abundant life. I'd rather for you to go out here and do something than go out here and just say you heard something. Faith comes by hearing, but results come by doing. He says, show me your faith without your word. Did you hear what I just said? Faith comes by hearing. Your faith is growing right now. But if it wants to produce, you've got to do something. 
Tell somebody to do something. I'm, and I, can I help some of y'all? And I'm finna, I'm finna bother y'all real bad. Because what he wants you to do, you can't do by yourself. God never calls you to do something you can do by yourself. So just, just X that out of your head. Well, it's too big for me. Must not be God. Maybe God telling me to tell Bishop to do this. He equipped for that. He done been to seminary. He got all them degrees. He ready for that. No, God doesn't call you based on what you got. He calls you based on what he gives you. He calls you based on what you're willing to receive from him. Tell somebody you got to learn how to receive from God. Well, yeah, you got to learn how to receive from God. How do I get it from God? If God says I've already given you everything that has to do with life, and godliness, then how do I get it? If he said he's giving it to me, either God lying or I ain't in the right place. And God said, I'm not a man that I should love. If he said he has already given me, what does that mean? It's already done. If I'm not receiving it, whose fault is it? Probably not God. And instead of saying, God, where is it? You need to say, God, where am I? Remember the question he asked Adam? Adam, first question he asked Adam, where are you? You all remember that question? Before then, he communed spirit to spirit with Adam. He shows up out of Adam messed up. Adam, where are you? How many of us, if God asked us that tonight, could ask? Are you where I've created a good life for you, a God life? Are you where I'm sending peace towards your way? Are you where I am sending good and not evil? What now? Am I in a place where God is sending good toward me and not evil? He says his thoughts toward me are good and not evil. His thoughts toward me are peace. Now, if God has sent them toward me, let me help some of you. He's sending them where I'm supposed to be. He's sending them to where I'm supposed to be. Do you do know there's a position for you in God? That when you get to that position. See, Jacob had to find himself by himself. And God shows up. David had to find himself in trouble. And he had to find it. Lord, vindicate me. Do you see what I'm saying? Moses had to find himself on the backside of the mountain. What else you got to go around and go through and go over before you find where you are? Adam, which is us, where are you? Where are you with God? Are you spirit to spirit with God? Have you been born of his spirit? And washing his blood. Where are you with God tonight? Right now. If he were to come in this room, would you know his presence? Would you know his presence? Would there be something in your heart right now to say, look, there's God? Would you know? <laughs> I want to say this, and I'm well, I'm just going to say it. If his presence is here, right now, then you ought to know that his presence is here right now. If you can hear what I'm saying to you right now, I didn't ask you if you could feel it. You didn't hear what I just said. If you're waiting on a feeling to enjoy and receive from God, you done missed it. But those that have an ear, if you can hear the Spirit, then you can hear what God's thinking. You can't hear what God's thinking without the Spirit. And the Spirit of God hovered over the dark places. And God speaks. And God speaks. And light comes out of the darkness. And ground comes out of the water. Are y'all in here with me? He came that you might have what? Life. And that life what? He got thought towards you of what? And what is peace? Shalom. Nothing missing. Nothing broken. And nothing lacking. Now, is that what the Lord wants for us? Then why are we lacking? Why we got so much broken? 
And why is so much missing in our lives? I, I'm going to help us get to that tonight. Y'all ready for this? Y'all sure? Y'all ready for this Bible study? Uh, do me a favor. Do me a favor. Do me a favor. We at Jeremiah. Put Jeremiah 29, 11. Let me finish that scripture up. And then I want you to go to Galatians 6 and 8. For I know the thoughts that I think. God tells me, God thinks this about you. He's thinking about you. And I need to help y'all one more time. He always got you on his mind. He always got you on his mind. Anybody ever remember when your children first went to school? Remember the first day? They were somewhere else, but you were thinking about them children. Oh, I wonder what the joke is doing right now. I wonder if he's sitting in this seat. I wonder if he's paying attention. He's hard here like he be with me. Uh, anybody know what I'm talking about? What were your thoughts? Toward it, I sure hope. My child doing what they supposed to be doing. What if I told you God was thinking about you like that right now? I show hope they thinking and doing what they supposed to be doing up in that church tonight. Huh? Just, I, I just want to know. Is Gregor Blue going to go in there and act like some preacher he saw on TV? Or is he going to come in and say what I told him to say? Uh, tonight. He says, I know what I'm thinking towards you. I know what I want you to do, says the Lord. Thoughts of what? Not what? So evil thoughts ain't got no business around me. Quit messing with evil thinking people. Quit being around evil thoughts of people. And rebuke every evil thought that shows up in your head. Doesn't the Bible say we can cast down vain imaginations and every thought that would exalt itself above the knowledge knowing what God above the knowledge of knowing what God thinks about it can I tell you something God ain't mad with none of y'all in here he's not thinking about being mad at you he ain't thinking about a way to get you back y'all need to get that in your head somebody told us that God's sitting up in heaven waiting to get us for everything we do wrong God ready to bless you for everything you do right He's just waiting on something, right? You can get cursed by just not doing. He ain't got to whoop you. you. The devil got, got, yeah, you get out of covenant and out of place. He got something waiting on you. God is waiting on you to get in position so he can bless you. I know thoughts of peace and not of evil and to give you a what? Give you a what? Give you a what? A future. Can I help some of y'all? A future ain't necessarily next year. A future can be your next moment. I want to give you a future. Some of you don't realize God will say your future. He changed Jacob's name. His whole gener- generation time. It's been over 4,000 years since he changed Jacob's name. His name is still Israel. In one moment, he went from being one thing to another. Can I tell you something? Your future can start right now if you hear God. Who that should have jumped in your spirit? Your future can begin right now. You know, Jesus Jesus solidified it, my sister. In, in John chapter 4, the woman at the well, when the disciples have gone off and they come back and they ask Jesus, now, now who gave him something to eat? Last time we saw him, he was talking to somebody he had no business talking to. And Jesus told him, I got meat that you have no knowledge of. That's not of this word. He said, but if you look up, it's four months till harvest. How many months? Four. He said, but if you look up right now, you can see the harvest, which means I can give you your future. Y'all ain't in here with me. Tell somebody, you ain't got to wait no longer. You can get it right now. But you got to lift up your head, O ye gates, and be ye lifted up, ye everlasting doors, and the king of glory shall come in. Who is this king of glory? He's the Lord strong and mighty. Who is this king of glory? The Lord mighty in battle. He'll fight your enemies for you right now. He'll destroy everything that stands before your face. And no weapon formed against you shall be able to prosper. And every tongue that rises up against you shall be condemned. When? Right now. Because he's given me a hope and a future. Do you know your driving home tonight is your future? Your walking in your house is your future? Why are you settling for next year? Your very next word out of your mouth is your future. 
Are you in a, why you say, well, in next season, or it'll be this. Why are you waiting? Today, I'm just trying to get y'all to grab it today. I'm just trying, I'm serious. I'm just trying to get you to grab it right now. Take it from me. Now, if you'd have talked to me about this, I wish somebody would have preached to me yesterday, but I'm talking to y'all now. I'm serious. Just preach to me yesterday. Right here. Well, Bishop, you know all that. Well, guess what? How can I hear except there be a preacher? I had to preach myself out of something yesterday. I had to preach myself. I had to cry myself. I had to, I had to unsick myself out of something yesterday. Because I had to realize my future was the next breath, I, the next tear I shed was my future. God, do y'all hear me tonight? He said, I want to give you a hope and a future. And now watch this. What I'm thinking towards you, good. When my future has good in it, why can't my next moments be good? My next seconds be good. The rest of my life be good. Let me finish. Oh boy, I'm preaching better than y'all shouting up in here. He said thoughts of peace and not evil. And to give you a future and a hope. A future and a hope. You know you can go so many days without bread and water, but you can't go one day without hope. You, you've seen a rash of people, and it's become one of the third, what's it, third leading cause of death among our people. It's suicide. Why? No hope. No hope. But he comes to give you what tonight? Hope. Just, just put your hand on yourself and say he's giving me hope right now. Right now. I got a reason to live. Now watch this. Hope is not I wish it'll happen. There's a difference. Like I hope I win the lottery. It ain't that kind of hope. Hope is this. A joyful expectation and anticipation that what God said he'll do, he's on his way to doing it. Did y'all hear what I, it is a joyful expectation and anticipation. You ought to be sitting on ready for God to do something for you right now. You ought to be sitting on, how my grandma used to say, sitting on ready. You need to be sitting on ready for God to do something amazing, miraculous, and bless you in a very special way right now. I, I know the Clark sisters wrote a song a long time ago, but it, it, it still rings in my spirit. I expect a miracle every day. God's going to make a way out of no way. I, 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 I expect it because he God. I expect it because he God. God don't live a whole hum day wondering what he's going to do. He's already worked the end of the thing out from the beginning. That's why he says, and always give thanks. And then he says, rejoice in the Lord. And again, I say, rejoice. Oh, baby, baby, baby. Y'all don't understand. I'm talking to me. I'm talking to me. The hope and a future. And now watch this. Watch this. Now, now go back to that. In the other, in other translation, it says, to give you a hope and an expected end. And you know, I used to, I used to, and I, and I, I, I used to teach this, but I realized I was only teaching part of it, Dion. You know, I get up and command my morning. And, and I get up, and I say, this is what I want the day to end up like. That's my expected end. But notice, this is God giving it expected end. So I shouldn't be telling God what I expect. I want to know what you expect from me today. Yeah, yeah. What do you expect from me by the time I lay down tonight to have gotten done? What do you expect from me to, hear, to have heard? Who do you expect to be blessed today? Have I been where you expected me to be? Have I done what you expected me to do? Have I talked to who you expected me to talk to? Have I given like you expected me to give? Have I been in places to receive where you expected me to receive? He wants to give that hope, that expected end. But it's an expectation that comes from God. Now watch this. It's so big it's going to take God to do it for real. You cannot receive what God expects of you by just being you. You can't do it. That's why Jesus came and died. We couldn't get to where he was, so he came to where we were. Y'all, he, he told us we to be like he is, but we couldn't do it in our own. He had to come and told them, now, you still can't do it. 
You go wait, and I'm going to send to you another. And with him, with him, all things will be possible. And when you use my name walking with him, nothing that's impossible shall be impossible for you. Do y'all hear what I'm saying? And whatever God expects out of your life, no matter how big it is, Brother Tate, it shall come to pass because God can't lie. The Bible closes in Mark 16 by saying these words, and God working with them. Oh, I wish somebody said, God work with me. And now I want you to make up your mind, I'm going to work with God. I'm going to work with, you got to use what you got, and I got him. Yeah, Paul said, I can, he went and recounted all his degrees. He went and recounted who he had been taught by. He even said, I'm a Pharisee of Pharisee, a Jew circumcised on the eighth day, sat under the feet of Gamaliel. He said, but I caught all that is dung for the excellency of the knowledge of the one who loves me. Did you hear what I said? All I got to do is just want him more than I want stuff. Seek ye first. And all these shall be what? Added. Quit looking for the things. Quit praying about things. Stop praying to God for God. God, I want you. Give me you. Everything else can wait. Give me you. I know it ain't too late. Give me you. Lord, give me you. When I'm broken, give me you. We start saying, Lord, you're going to have to help me. No, give me you. Because with you, I can't fail. Do you hear what I'm saying? With your purpose, I'm going to make it. I'm going to get to where you want me to go. I'm going to do what you want me to do. But I can't do it by myself because I'm too much me to do what you want me to do. Y'all ain't got that part. It ain't, I, I know it's too much for me. That's why Paul said, I die daily. There's a piece of me that I give over to him every, every day, a piece of me. You shouldn't be getting lazy as you get to know the Lord. You know, some of us, we get promoted, we get to be elder, deacon, minister. All of a sudden, we lazier than we were when we, because we got a title now. You're not dying. Your eldership, your leadership, your, your mentorship, your ministry ought to make you give more of you up every day for more of him. More of it. Did, did y'all hear me? Did that make any sense? Because I just felt that straight from heaven. You heard me, Henry? Every day I ought to doubt of me. I ought to think less like me and more like him every day. I ought to expect more, watch this, more of him and less of me every day. What God can do in my life, nobody else can do. Watch this. I know the thoughts and plans I have for you, the thoughts of peace and not of evil, right? God ain't thinking evil. He's not waiting to uh, waiting on you, brother Tate, to do something wrong so he can get you. That ain't what he's waiting on. He wants you to get where you get peace, to give you a future and a hope. Go to Galatians 6 and 8 real quick. I want y'all to get this. I want y'all to get this. Get this. Get this. Get this. Uh, you, you, you done went to verse 6, but I'll take it. Uh, verse 6, I said 6 and 8, but let's go at 6. I'll do 6 right here. Let him who is taught the word. I said 6 and 8, but 6 and 6 is the word. Let him who is taught the word, sharing all good things with him who teaches. What did it just say? What y'all Bible say? Y'all didn't read that part? Let him who is taught, who is he talking about? Me? Me? Share in all good things with him who teaches. Did y'all see that? Is that in your Bible? Did, did it say share in leftovers? Whatever you call good, you ought to share in. Now watch this. Notice what God's got thinking towards you. Good. Wait, wait, wait. I'm going to get y'all blessed right now. If God is thinking good towards you, you ought to think the good thing that taught me that God got something good for me. Y'all ain't get that. I ain't trying to get nothing out of you. I'm trying to get something to you. 
I didn't ask nobody here for a dime. I'm just telling you what the word says. Faith comes by hearing. But what gets results? What you do with what you heard. That's where the results come. Faith comes. But if you want results, you got to do something. Hallelujah. Verse number eight. Thank you. For he who sows to his flesh, of the flesh will reap what? Corrupt. Thank you for saying it loud, Eric. He who sows, who keep investing in your flesh, will sow and reap what? Corruption. Things that will die. Things that are not eternal. Things that don't, watch this, are abundant. He came to may have life and have that life what? More abundant. But if it's corrupt, corruption in it, it can't be abundant. No. But he who sows to the Spirit, notice here's an interesting play between the Spirit and the flesh. He who sows to the Spirit. Now watch this, because y'all need to get this. Y'all need to get this. He who sows. How do you sow to the Spirit? Tell somebody about doing spiritual things. How do you know what a spiritual thing is? God is Spirit, and whatever God says is Spirit. So if God tells you to do something, you, you just sow to the Spirit. But if you don't do it, then you just sold to corruption. So when you get back and bills ain't paid, well, how do you sow to the Spirit? It's tithing a spiritual thing. How do you know? Because God said it. The Spirit said it. The Spirit will tell you what's spiritual. If you're spiritual enough to hear. Did you hear what I just said? It ain't about just being right and wrong. That ain't always the answer. What does the Spirit say? Do you hear what I'm saying? Can I, can I help you all again? It ain't always about being right or wrong. It's what does the Spirit say? Now, let, me, let me give you all an example. Uh, if you had two fish, five loaves of bread, and 5,000 people, would that be the wrong equation? Yeah. Don't quite equal it. Don't quite measure. But when the Spirit has something to do with it, two fish and five loaves of bread going to take care. So it ain't an issue of just about being right and wrong. It's about am I doing a spiritual thing? Am I sowing to the Spirit? So if the Spirit tells me, and I sow into what the Spirit says. Now I can say, and act like I don't know what the Spirit says. That's why he sends preachers. To perfect the saints. To do the work of the ministry. But how can they hear except they be a preacher? And how can they preach except be sent to the ones that need to hear? Y'all wouldn't be here in this building listening to me if God didn't want you here. That ain't pompous. That's the whole truth. You wouldn't be here. I wouldn't be teaching. Do you hear what I'm saying? The only reason you hear is because God wanted you here to hear what? A spiritual thing. I ain't got to tell y'all about the young and the wrestling. I ain't got to tell you about what's going on downtown. I ain't got to. Y'all can pick up the paper. I need to tell you what's going on in the spirit. I need to speak so you can sow in the spirit and reap things that will not corrode. Let me, let me finish this. But he who sows to the Spirit will what? what? How long? Wait, now, he came that we might have what? And that's what? More abundant. But we got to be sowing to the Spirit. To, remember I told you, he came to give you life. You leave out here with life. But if you're going to get more abundant life, you got to sow into what you heard. That ain't just giving me an offering. Don't get that wrong. That ain't what I'm saying. You sow when you go out and do it. That's right. Work it. Work the word. Then you'll reap of the spirit. What the spirit brings you? Everlasting life. Verse number nine. Let us not grow weary. Notice, why would he say weary? All the time you get weary when you do so. Some of us getting weary, we just sitting there on the bench. I ain't picking at nobody yawning. I know y'all had a long. They've been up there. 
Be not weary while you're doing good. Don't be weary when you're doing good. Don't get tired of doing what's right. Anybody ever heard, and I don't said, I'm about tired of being the only one that's doing right. I'm, I'm about tired of doing, you, you, why I got to be the only one? Why I got to always do the right thing? Ain't nobody else doing it. Ain't nobody else said that beside me. I'm just going to tell on me then. Y'all see me on TV? Me done done it. This me. <laughs> I done got tired. And I said it. I'm about tired. And not, not, I just talking. Because it came up, I was going to do the right thing anyway. But I said it out of my mouth. The Bible said you get snared by what you say. Did you hear what I just said? Be not weary when you're doing what's right. Because I found out this thing is true. Payday coming after a while. And now that I know my future can have many moments. Y'all ain't in here with me. For in D-U-E. Anybody know what do means? Anybody know what do means? Anybody know what do means? Anybody know? If I told you your bill do, what does that mean? It's time to pay it, which means it has a date on it. Y'all didn't hear what I just said. It has a date on it. You have a season that has a date on it. Can I help y'all? Y'all want to know what your date is? How many want to know what their date is? He says, in the day you hear my voice, harden not your heart. Ah, if you hear them right now, you're in the middle of your due season. If God's talking to you, it is due. And watch this, watch this. Oh, boy, good God. In due season, we shall not. If you can hear what I'm saying to you tonight, it is due season. And you shall reap if you don't faint. Don't quit. That word faint means don't quit, don't give up, and don't cave in. Because you know there's stuff out there make you want to cave in to pressure and quit, and give up. He says, if you don't quit, don't cave in. Uh, Lord, I, I done tired three weeks, and ain't nothing happened. Don't quit, don't give up, and don't cave. Lord, I've been faithful for two months now. Ain't nothing changed. Don't quit, don't cave in, and don't give up. Because there's a due date. Can I help some of y'all? Here's what I like. A past due date. We should have had it 20 years ago long. We should have had it. I know you 20. Yeah, we should have had it 20 years ago. He gives us a new mercy every day. Oh, so even though I missed it 20 years ago, don't mean I can't have it right now because I got a mercy for that day. And I got a mercy for last week. And I got a mercy for last year. And I got a mercy for 20 years ago. And I got a mercy for 25 years ago. He was just waiting for me not to quit, not to give up, and not to cave in. Get where I can hear a word and so to the Spirit. I'm out of time, y'all. We will reap if we shall not lose heart. What did he tell Joshua? Well, only be strong and of good courage. And you shall prosper in everything you do. Jesus said, I came that you might have life, Dion. And that life I want you to have more abundantly. And then he tells us, in the day you hear the voice, don't play hard to get. Don't harden your heart. For in due season, you will reap if you don't faint. This is the word of God for you tonight.